Hi, my name is Kareem Benamar, and this is a short talk about how to live radically differently in times of Corona. Now, today is Friday, March 27th, 2020, and the pandemic is spreading across the world. And I'm afraid things are going to get a lot worse before they start getting better. But we could ask ourselves, how can I live differently? What are the five stages through which we can go when we think about how to live in these times of Corona? I hope you enjoy this talk. Thank you for listening and stay safe. Hi, my name is Kareem Benamar. Welcome to the slideshow Living Radically Differently. This is about how we have to live in times of Corona. And I think there are five stages in doing so. The first one is denial. This is not happening. Then we shift things. We shift our usual way of doing things online and indoors. But we can also go a step further and reframe do things radically differently. If we move on, we move to a sense of mobilization. We want to survive this virus. What is needed of us? How do we radically change our input and output? And finally, thinking about a world after Corona, we have to ask ourselves, what are the core values on which we want to base how we act? But let's look at our current situation first. Everything has changed. And it started with the large events we had planned for this year, like the song contest or Euro 2020, the football event, the Grand Prix and the Olympic Games. And all of these events have been cancelled or postponed indefinitely. And of course, this has also happened in your own life. You had plans for this year, work targets, holidays you were planning to take. Perhaps you were preparing for a half marathon or some other sports event. You had a birthday party. Perhaps you were turning 40 or 50 or 80, something remarkable. Some students were going to graduate and some school children were going to graduate. We had weddings planned and so on. Basically, all of your life has changed dramatically. All of it has been replaced by the coronavirus. And this is quite a hit that we've all taken. So the first stage really is denial. We want to keep on doing business as usual. And my first question to you is really, which cancelled activity or event in your life will you miss the most? What hurts? Imagine if you're Liverpool and you're 25 points ahead of the competition and you were going to win the Premier League and now perhaps the season is going to be cancelled. The second stage really is that we're making a shift and we're shifting from physical to online. Work has shifted online for those who can. Learning has shifted online. This is an example of online learning. Shopping has shifted online where possible and so has entertainment. And where we used to go out to a cinema or to a theater or to a concert, now we do all of this online as much as possible. And realize what would have happened if the virus had hit 30 years ago when there was no online, there were no smartphones, there was no internet. We would have had to deal with it with television and telephones and postcards. The second shift really is from outdoors to indoors. Work has moved indoors. Children have moved indoors because the schools are closed. And the combination of having to work indoors and your children being indoors is quite tough for a lot of people. Our social life has moved indoors as much as possible, and so has exercise for the countries that are experiencing a lockdown. And really, again, we see the shift. We do the same things, but we do them in a different way. Instead of doing them outside in the physical world, we do them online. Instead of doing them outdoors, we do them indoors. And so the second question is, what have you started doing differently in the last few days? There are some really creative solutions like online, online yoga lessons or online concerts, online meetings. All the things that we used to do in our lives, can we shift them online and indoors? But this is only really a shift of the same things. We're trying to keep doing business as usual, except in a different context. Now, if we want to think radically differently, we might have to dig a little bit deeper. Most of what we do uh, is based on a current frame. As a philosopher, I ask myself, why do we do the things we do? Why have we organized life as we have? Why are these institutions e exist? Why do we pay taxes in this way? Why is the education system in such a way? Why do we live in such a way? And we can think about doing it radically differently. And in order to do that, we need to examine how we do things. Most of what we do is based on what we think. Sometimes we do things without a reason, 
but usually there's a bit of theory, there's a bit of a reason behind it. But that thinking in itself is based on a number of assumptions. And if we dig deeper, we can dig deep down to these assumptions. Why do we do the things we do? Why is the education system the way it is? Why do we learn the way we learn? Why do we pay taxes in a certain way or go shopping in a certain way? And if we change these assumptions, then we can think differently about the world and we can act differently. Now, one example of this is that we think that life should be proportional. We want the input to be related to the output. That's why we pay people by the hour, really. An hour of input is more or less equal to an hour of output. The same thing in terms of size and quality. We think when something is bigger, then perhaps the quality is better. And in general, we live in a society where we think more is better. But imagine living in a society where that is not the case, where the input is not related to the output, where the size doesn't influence the quality, and perhaps less is better. To give you an example of this disproportionate world, think of the Olympic Games, an enormous output organizing it, $20 billion of costs, and this summer no output. Think of a virus, a small input, some transition of a virus from an animal in China, and look at the pandemic that it's created. So we really have to get used to a world in which the input is not related to the output. So when you've shifted working from outside to inside, why do you keep working the same hours? When we shift education for our children inside, why do we try to follow the same curriculum? Sometimes we have to ask ourselves this, why do it at all? Waste, doing with great efficiency what should not be done at all, is one of my favorite quotes by Peter Drucker. And a lot of what we do is waste. Perhaps 50%, perhaps 80% of what we usually do, we don't really need to do at all. Every company really needs a chief destructions officer, somebody who's going to go around and see things that we can cancel. And if you think, well, I'm not at the CEO level, then perhaps we can be inspired by someone else. Perhaps you need to be the terminator of your own work. Perhaps that's work, there's work that doesn't make sense to be doing in times of corona. Perhaps you need to terminate certain aspects of your work. So really, the third stage, reframing, is about thinking deep and hard about what the original reason is for doing things. What are the assumptions underlying your current behavior? And you can change them. You can do things radically differently. You can spend a lot less time doing them. You can do them in a different time frame, in a different order, uh, with different people. Or you can decide not to do them at all. And so the question I could ask you is then, what could you start doing radically differently? What aspect of the way you've shifted your life indoors and online could you really start changing? The fourth stage really is about mobilization. When we're fighting the virus, we're entering a war paradigm, a war way of doing things, a war frame. Now, I'm a pacifist. I don't really like violence or war, but I do think that we're fighting the virus. We do want to survive. We are in survival mode. And so we have a certain form of production during peace times that's shifting to a war production where we can tell companies what the world needs. We're shifting to war consumption where certain things are going to be rationed because there might not be enough of it. We're shifting to a war economy because we're paying people who have lost their jobs and we're helping companies when they're about to collapse. We're spending enormous amounts of money, which would have seemed completely unimaginable even a couple of weeks ago, to prop up the world economy. Think of America, where every American is going to get money. That kind of experiment in a universal basic income and doing it with 330 million people. And of course, our laws are changing. All the directions we get to stay at home, the laws that allow the government to requisition things from companies, from individuals, perhaps even to nationalize vaccines and other government things. Now, the fourth stage then is this mobilization. It's a radically different engagement because we're engaged in a fight and we have a purpose and we have a common purpose. And there's an enemy that we need to defeat for ourselves, but also for others. How could you mobilize yourself and your company in these times of Corona? What does the world need? How could you help defeat the virus? How could your company contribute to defeating the virus? What does your company usually do and what should it do at the current moment? 
Now, if we move to the fifth stage, we're really talking about redesigning the world for after Corona. And there's an exercise called clean sheet redesign, which is a very simple exercise because all you need is a blank page and a pen. And starting with the blank page, you ask yourself, how would we redesign it completely? If we could redesign the education system, or if we could redesign the tax system, or if we could redesign how much we're paying people in the health system, how would we do it? And starting from scratch is really actually impossible because there's always some fundamental core value that you want at the bottom. What do we want our education system to be about? What do we want our economic system to be about? This is the starting point for our redesign. And really, the way our world is constructed these days is very much like that. We have actions and behavior. They're based on certain protocols and certain ways of acting and certain theories. There's systems and institutions which help create these systems. Think of the education system or the health system or the tax system or the family, family law system. And those in turn should be based on the core values. What matters to us as human beings? If Corona is going to destroy a lot of our current structures, a lot of our current systems and institutions, and if we need to rebuild them in the world after Corona, what shall we base them on? When we think of the fifth stage of core values, this is really about redesigning tomorrow's world. And the question you could ask yourself is, which core values do you think are important? Which will you use to redesign tomorrow's world? Now let me summarize and come to the end of this short presentation. There are five stages when we think about living radically differently in times of a fundamental crisis such as the corona crisis. The first stage is really to accept the loss that we're suffering by having our great sporting events cancelled, by having everything we had planned for ourselves to be cancelled this year. It's denial, it's I want to have business as usual, I want to hold on to something that mattered to me. I want to hold on to this birthday party I'd spend a year planning. The second stage in which we're all engaged is shifting things. We shifted everything online as much as possible. We're shifting our lives indoors to stay in place, to shelter in place, to help sp stop spreading the coronavirus. But really what we're doing is we're trying to do everything we did outside and offline, we're trying to do it online and inside. And perhaps we should move to stage three where we ask ourselves, what was the point of doing it? Should children be doing homework just the way they used to do at school? Why not play video games? Why not have different meetings? Why not create different things with our company or in our interpersonal relationships? How can we really question why we did things in the first place? And then we move to the fourth stage of mobilization. What does the country need? What does the world need? What is being asked of you? What is the best use of your time? Not just doing the same things, not just doing things radically differently, but doing things with a specific purpose. You have a radically different engagement. This is not play anymore. You're fighting to save the world, to clear the world of Corona. And finally, thinking ahead to the times afterwards. Why are we fighting this battle? How can we recreate the system? We're not going to go back to the same world. We will have to design a new world. But this is also an amazing opportunity to create a world very different from the way it was before. So look at the things that your life is composed of. It's your health first and foremost, and also your loved ones. It's what you eat and how we sustain and nourish ourselves. It's our work and our income. Some people have work, but no income. For example, if they were artists. Some people have income, but no work if they're forced to stay at home. It's about the exercise that we used to do and our physical health. It's about our emotional health and our emotional needs. And it's about having meaning in our lives. And these are just some of the things that I've mapped. But perhaps you could map for yourself what your life was like pre-corona, even a few weeks or a few short months ago. What mattered in your life? What are the elements of your life? And you can ask yourself, if there are five stages to living radically differently, which stage am I at in these different aspects of my life? Perhaps with my loved ones, I've already made the shift. But in my diet, I'm in denial, eating the same stuff as usual. Perhaps I've mobilized in terms of my work. And perhaps I've asked myself, what are my core values in terms of meaning and emotional life? I wish you 
All the best with this transition. Stay safe, take care of your loved ones. Please show some compassion. We're all being traumatized by this at the moment. Please help the ones who have it less fortunate than you have. And let's see if we can all get through this together. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for listening.